Two Worlds, One Family by Dragon Translator Chapter 4 Civility Laws They landed with the wild dragons finding places behind the nightmare, and the riders finding place behind Toothless and Hiccup. Frostfire and Palewing stayed upon Shadowfire, though Frostfire moved to sit with his mother and not stand upon Shadowfire's head. The nightmare shuffled forward and laid down fully in front of Hiccup and Toothless. Hiccup dismounted and moved around in front of Toothless. Why are you lying down? he asked. I owed your judgment, the nightmare said. Civility laws are sacred amongst us, and we have violated them. Um, can you sit up, please? Hiccup asked. The nightmare did so, but kept his gaze lowered. Hiccup sighed, but did not ask the nightmare to look up. I'm new to all of this, Hiccup said. We weren't able to really talk to dragons until today when Gida arrived. The nightmare blinked. You speak the common tongue well, he said. Gida's a mage, Hiccup said. She's the reason we can. The nightmare jerked. You have a mage living in this nest? he asked. Yes, you sound surprised. Mages were thought extinct. Oh, no, she's right there, Hiccup said, pointing to Gida. The nightmare still did not lift his gaze. Hiccup sighed. He glanced back at Toothless, who gave him a smile, and tossed his head back towards the nightmare. Anyway, Hiccup said, I didn't even know that there were civility laws. Can you tell me what they are? Dragons approaching or visiting a nest are to respect it and the dragons living there. We are not to destroy or steal from it. If the nest has an alpha or a queen, we are to never insult or threaten to kill the alpha or queen or any of their flock. Are you supposed to poop on it? Snotlout demanded. Hush, Hatchling. Let the alpha deal with this. I am no... Hiccup turned, finding Snotlout's mouth still moving, but no sound coming out. He looked to Gida, who tipped her head. Hiccup sighed, but turned back to the nightmare. Don't answer that, and don't mind him. Hiccup said, Are civility laws only for dragons? Long ago, our ancestors were said to have extended them to humans. But humans lost the ability to speak the common tongue. I see. Can I ask where all of you come from? The nightmare jerked. We lived in a volcano with a monster until humans came and angered her. Hiccup gasped. The nightmare lowered himself again. Um, why did you do that? My words seem to have angered you. No, not anger. Surprise. My tribe were the humans that angered that monster. She had all of you raising us. The nightmare and many of the dragons behind him hissed and groaned. Hiccup turned to Toothless, who just tossed his head back towards the nightmare. Are you okay? For a dragon to violate civility laws is to risk such a dishonour as to be banished from flock and nest, an exile to live alone. You, as Alpha of this nest, have the right to do that to all of us. But you said civility laws were only extended to humans when they could understand the common tongue. And you can. But you didn't know that, Hiccup said. I'm not going to punish you for any of this. The nightmare blinked. You are granting mercy. I'm forgiving you. All of you. That had the nightmare looking up and staring at Hiccup. You forgive us? Yes. That monster started the war between us. You either raided or were eaten. That's not something you should be punished for. I imagine the actions after the monster were killed were you all getting revenge for loved ones being killed in the war. Not revenge for a loved one. At least not for me. Anger that we faced death both before us and behind us. We understood the humans' reactions to our raiding. But we were unaware the humans did not know of the monster. For me, my actions were just a vengeance on the unfairness of it all. Well, that monster is gone, and none of you have to worry about Burke attacking you. 
we know she is gone. We no longer hear her call, but we do not know how she met her end. Brother killed her, Tithless said. Protect her? You were thought lost and dead. How are you here? And you call him kin? The story of how I am here is long, but yes, the alpha of this nest is my brother. He challenged that monster and made her pay for the her crimes. How? Oh. That is part of the tale of how I came to be kin to the alpha of this nest. Short version, all but the bigger dragon, the two tiny ice spitters and the mage found that monster. Under Alpha's orders, I tricked her into the skies and used the clouds to hide in. I damaged her wings. Alpha ordered me to fly right down in front of her. And when she built her gas to flame, Alpha had me flip over and fire a bolt down her throat. She choked, and when she tried to spread her wings to stop her dive, the holes I put there tore more. She crashed and exploded. You fired the final shot. Only because my Alpha ordered me to. The Nightmare shook himself. We oh, are fools, he muttered. Hey, none of that. Hiccup said, frowning. Please don't call yourself a fool for not knowing something. Dad said most of the dragons flew away when he and the rest of the tribe busted into the mountain. So you and they didn't see the end. The nightmare blinked and stared at Hiccup for several long, silent moments, then looked to Toothless. You are lucky, protector, to have a brother and an author with such honour and wisdom. The nightmare turned back to Hiccup. Upon my honour, and the honour of all the other elders present, we vow to never disrespect this nest or you again, Alpha of the Nest. If you give us your leave, we will go and bother you no more. Where will you go? Hiccup asked. Do you all live at that mountain still? No. Some remain there. Some found other places to live. Those behind me have been looking for a home. Hiccup looked to Toothless, who stared at him, and then snorted and shook himself. Hiccup then looked at Astrid, who frowned at him for a bit, before her eyes widened, and she sighed. Hiccup looked back to the nightmare. If my dad and I can find places for you on this island, would you like to live here? You would invite us to be part of your nest? Sure, if you want. The nightmare looked over his shoulder. Another conversation ensued. The nightmare turned back to Hiccup when the last of the dragons became silent. The nightmare then lowered himself to the ground, his belly and neck touching the grass. You are gracious and merciful, my Alpha. Your Alpha? You want to live here? Yes. The elders and I know to serve an Alpha such as you will allow us to repay all that we have done. Hiccup sighed. Not what he wanted, but he would take it. He blinked when a young green nightmare, just bigger than Toothless, shuffled forward. Excuse me, you have a father who is still alive? The young nightmare asked. Hush, young one, the elder nightmare hissed. The young one blinked. Sorry, elder, I'm just confused. I thought Alphas had no living fathers when they ruled a nest. The older nightmare sighed and turned back to Hiccup. Forgive him, Alpha. He is young. While we served that monster, we did not have the time to teach him everything a youngling his age should know. Hiccup smiled and walked over to the young nightmare. He held out his hand and turned his gaze, causing both nightmares and many other wild dragons to murmur. Soon, though, Hiccup felt warm scales against his palm and turned back to find the young nightmare staring at him with dilated eyes. Hiccup smiled. My father leads the village of people. Hiccup said, Where you would say Alpha, we say Chief. But this is your nest, the young nightmare said. The dragons named me their Alpha. Hiccup said, I'm still not sure what that means, or even what to do now. So I really can't clear up your confusion. Sorry. Hiccup scratched the nightmare's nose, earning a pleased sounding coo. Hiccup chuckled before looking at the older Nightmare. He doesn't need forgiveness for being curious. 
I'm not going to be mad at his questions. Questions ask lead to wisdom answering. Gothi once scribbled that after I bugged her for an hour about bandaging wounds. I feared I had bothered her and was about to leave, when she stopped me and wrote that in the dirt with her staff. Why were you asking Gothi about bandaging wounds? Astrid asked, her eyes narrowed. Hiccup did not answer. He had bandaged his own wounds since Dog Breath stabbed him. He would not tell his friends that, though. They knew most of his past even the parts he had kept from everyone. He did not wish to see more guilt in their eyes. They finally accepted him and were willing to spend time with him. He did not want to remind them of what it was like before the Red Death. They would remember who he truly was. Hiccup looked to the older nightmare, but heard Astrid's soft gasp, and he knew he was in for it when they walked through the village later. Hiccup shoved that aside. If my dad and I made it so you could all live here, can I ask that you all promise not to bother the humans? Things are dicey enough, even with the war over. Three hundred years is not undone in a month. All the wild dragons, even the young nightmare, bowed to Hiccup. You are Alpha, the old nightmare said. We give our word to obey you in all things. The nightmare tilted his head. We dragons will learn to live amongst humans. Can we ask that the humans learn to live amongst us dragons? Sure, Hiccup said. You have the same rights of being understood as they do. We'll all live and grow together. With that, all dragons, even the ones with the riders, lifted their heads and roared as one. Hiccup looked around, smiling. This had been his dream since he and Toothless became friends. A world where dragons and humans could live together in harmony. A place in even hiccups could call home and know they belonged. He spied Astrid smiling at him and felt his face warm. He glanced away, finding Toothless giving him a gummy smile. Hiccup returned it with one of his own before looking at all the dragons. Let's go talk to my dad. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I like this. Hiccup is being so amazing. One thing that is a common theme in this is Hiccup's pure worthiness. He is naturally good at these things, but it doesn't come at a price. It's not something he popped out of the womb knowing. He would earned it through fear. He knows what it's like to not be accepted. And he doesn't want that for anyone else, even though he's struggling seeing his own worth. But that's why everyone else sees it, so that they can remind him. And I really like that. And I like that Astrid's constantly got his back. It's very subtle in some chapters, but they like look at each other, might not say a word, but they can tell. And I like that. Hiccup and Astrid are one of the healthiest written couples out there. I've seen them described as a variant on Persebeth, and I'm just like, yes. Between Hickstrid, Broppy, and Persebeth, those are my three ride or die ships. I just ship them so hard. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified if I never upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, cousin, or bye, my pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.